So our first thoughts are obviously for the countries that are going through what they're going through right now with the outbreaks of the virus. Uh, certainly our Italian and our Chinese colleagues are on our minds uh, and we're sending our wishes out to them that they're going through this, getting through this with minimal damage. Uh, obviously all of our conferences have been canceled, all of our work meetings have been canceled. We're all, my European colleagues and I are all desperately trying to learn what technologies are available to do efficient distance conferencing. One of the thing, good things that might come out of all of this in the, in the long run is our capacity to do work more via technologies, distance technologies, rather than flying everywhere, obviously from an environmental perspective. We'd rather do distance working, although that's hard and it changes the dynamics entirely. Beyond that, the next thing we think of is, okay, how do we get ourselves ready for this? We have a window of opportunity. Uh, the fact that this, uh, the transmission rises exponentially, but we've managed through all these measures to slow down the transmission by stopping transportation between countries and by self-isolating and by preventing gatherings. We've gave, given ourselves a crucial opportunity to prepare. Uh, and to think a little bit about what we would need to do. For me, it comes back to, okay, what elements of society are strong that give us the resilience uh, to, to face this kind of crisis? And Israel, of course, has a history of being able to face crises like these. We often rise to the occasion, uh, organize amongst ourselves, look after the weaker uh, elements of society to get through crises like this, although we've never faced something like this. Uh, the most important aspects of society's resilience, the interaction between people and their capacity to be able to absorb a crisis like this with minimal damage uh, has to do with trust and equity, that, that neighbors trust each other, that people trust their politicians and their leadership to make the right decisions, to make informed decisions. It's certainly comforting to know that our political leaders are consulting with medical experts always and deciding what risk they can take, how much they can forego economic activity in the name of health, but take financial losses, and they're always thinking this through, but it's comforting to know that they're consulting. So trust is absolutely one of the first things that come to mind, and also to trust that your neighbor will do the right thing, to try to avoid transmission, not to spread rumors, to look after one another. Uh, the next is transparency and openness, that all the decisions that leaders are doing, they say why they're doing it, and so we can trust that they're doing it for the public good and not for political self-interest or economic self-interest. So openness and transparency is crucial, and, uh, and also equity, of course, that everybody in society receives the same treatment, the same opportunity in the event that they get sick for care. Uh, all of that is absolutely crucial as well. people might not know about urban planning is that it's not just about writing up physical plans, but it, rather it's about working with communities and a diversity of populations to try to understand their needs and translate their needs into spatial planning, uh, to work with communities, to allow bottom-up influence and allow individuals to have a say in the development of their own communities. So that also has to do with education, it has to do with consultation, it has to do with meeting uh, communities. Uh, all of the things that we do here with regard to the social aspects of physical planning also add to our resilience and also add to our capacity to absorb shocks and to increase trust and openness, etc. What's unique about the Technion and what's unique about the Faculty of Architecture and Urban Planning in the Technion is that we bring the element of social research and humanities and ethics and, and, and economics into what would otherwise be a very technical discussion of, of uh, energy, of transportation, of building. Uh, so I think it's really important that our faculty is nestled within this technological institution and hopefully uh, we're having a reverberating effect on uh, on scientific discovery, on technologies that are adapted for society, because there's always a social and economic and ethical consideration
to a technology. And among other people at the Technion, we serve partially in that role to do a check and balance of the types of technologies that they're developing in the university. So I say this very, very carefully because in a time like this, it's very difficult to be optimistic about the future because we're most certainly going to see a lot more human suffering before things start getting better. However, there are a lot of lessons to be learned from this process. Lessons to be learned about public health and access to health care. Lessons to learn about how so societies come together and deal with uh, pandemics and other crises. Of course, we have a lot of global environmental crises on the horizon, and the lessons learned dealing with this very immediate one may help us manage those future uh, crises. <laughs>